I, clearly they have to have the passion. I mean, the most important thing, the knowledge you can learn, um, the information you can learn. We all learn information. That's a matter of being around a longer time. But if you don't have the passion, um, you're not going to be a rock star. So we look for people at IFS that, are, that basically have the passion for study abroad. And then little by little, you know, they start off in the band. And they're playing bass guitar, but before you know it, they, they become the lead singer. And somebody who's creative, because I think you gotta, I think the way that I became known in the field was by stepping outside of the traditional boxes and saying, wait a minute, we need this data, we need this kind of connectedness to the curriculum. Study abroad is not an add on, it's gotta be integral. You know, of course, what we look for, what I look for in talent above all else, above communication skills, management skills, organizational skills, is a, a genuine commitment to what we're doing. Um, more than anything else, I want staff to have complete ownership of, of what they're doing and of the project that they're working on. So for overseas staff, I wanna know that the person in charge feels like that program is their baby and they will go to bat for it, they will do anything for it uh, for remote staff working in the United States, I want them to say that that region is their region, hands off. They want to they want to work with their students, and they want to have uh, real ownership over what's going on there. And I, I think it's that kind of ownership or that commitment level that that helps us get through uh, cri you know crises or challenges or. Um, you know, it, it also helps people be really innovative in thinking of how to solve problems and, and how to do the best that they can for the job that they're, that they're hired to do. I guess there are really two types of people, right? There are the people who, who feel like, what do I have to lose? You know, I'm not, it doesn't hurt anybody by talking to them. Or the people who are either insecure or shy, just feel like, nah, you know, I'm, I'm not comfortable doing that. And yeah, we're, we're, for the most part, a field of people who <laughs> will talk to anybody. Um, well, Brooke, that's a good question. I've had 23 years of experience of hiring people, so I think I've seen quite a few really neat rock stars that come through our organization. You know, it occurred to me that one of the things that I think defines success or helps people is the idea of living in, in what I call the gray area. People that can kind of live on in the gray area are people that don't have to see the black and white. I think they're people that are open to options, um, people that like to solve problems. Um, there's never enough time in the day. I think people need work-life balance, and so I find people that can kind of live with the ambiguity um, and a little bit of the unknown. I think that's the person that's the rock star. It's a great question, and one that I have a lot of different words that came to mind, but when I had to break it down to one word, it was ownership. Um, really having, and by that I mean you own the organization, you own the office, you own the problems, and you own the opportunities as well. And the other things that really matter to me are part of that, things like accountability, authenticity, and action. So I think you've got to have somebody who's willing to take some risks, and that's your rock star, you know, and, and step outside a little bit and say, let's try this. Really, you know, I start, the first word that popped out of my mouth and head was passion, and it was really that the ability to articulate one's strengths and directions, even if they're fuzzy. We have had people that have approached us with ideas about, well, well, they've highlighted their background, and we've looked at that and said, gosh, this is great, this is where we're going, and because of that synergy, we, we've created a job, and they've been with us for a long time, and they grow and they change. Well, I think that a rock star in international education a lot of times is the same as a rock star in any professional field. And I think you have to be hardworking and dedicated and you've got to think of your career as a career and not a, uh, a job. I mean, when I see them, you can see it right away. It's very hard in writing, um, but it's... Um, when you go to a, a, a NAFSA conference or, or forum conference, when you see somebody, you can see, if they have the magic, you can see there's a crowd of people around them usually. Uh, more than anything, I, I'm looking for staff who uh, can really commit to what they're doing and, and commit to the point where I have to remind them uh, that they have to have a life outside their job. Um, I, need to, I, I, I want to be able to say to them, you know, it's time to go home. 
uh, you need to get out of here. Um, that's how much I want them to believe in what we're doing and to feel a sense of ownership. You can't train, you can't train someone to do this. They, they either have it or they don't. I do think that the flexibility and you know, really trying to understand how an organization and a university functions and what it needs and then highlight those parts of you that have it is the way to go. Uh, I also th think if someone can talk about a time when they really honestly felt like the job was not going to get done and they made it happen, that's powerful. One of the mantras that I um, live by is to hire the heart and I can train the head. Um, and that certainly doesn't mean that we you know, want somebody who's not intelligent, but um, I'm looking for someone who's got great passion about international education, someone who is an authentic person. Um, they're a great communicator. They're enthusiastic and positive. Someone who can take a project and run with it, um, do the research, do the data collection that's needed and really demonstrate to me that, um, you know, that they have the passion for this work and the ability to carry it out. I would say one of the unique characteristics that's come up in recent years is the ability to, uh, for staff to create their own area of expertise through social media, through their own blogging, and be able to go both during their work time and their off time and, and develop their skills and expertise in something they're interested in. At Go Abroad, we have a lot of employees who've done that. They're passionate about what they do, and maybe we even discovered them through social media uh, and, and learned about their expertise through social media, and then they've been able to nurture that in the, in the work setting as well. Um, I also have found that in higher education, we cannot um, say that education abroad is, is great and share individual student stories. We've got to have the data that demonstrates time to graduation, that demonstrates the impact on our alumni. And so I look for people who are able to work with numbers and think about survey design and assessment. Um, just, I just hired a brand new marketing director. And you know one of the things I noticed most when she interviewed with me is that when I asked her a question, she answered it with we all the time as though she already worked in the organization. She goes, I said to her, you know, well, let's look at our website. It's, you know, I want it to refresh and I want it to look better. And she goes, well, you know what we need to do? We need to basically look at the home page and decide on better navigation. You know, we need to kind of go through an exercise with our clients to figure out what they want. And then we need to sit down and really strategize about does that. And everything she said was like, well, what we are going to do. And it was fun because subconsciously, I already saw her working there. The other person I asked in the interview said, well, you know what you people have done wrong with your website? You haven't done this and this and this, and you haven't done that and that and that. And indirectly, all they did was spend the entire interview criticizing everything that we had done, which means subconsciously I already didn't like them anyway, which is a strategy because both said the same thing that needed to be done, but one did it in a way that was cooperative and one did it in a way that was combative. And I think they had very different results from the interview teams for that reason. I'm not sure everybody in HR would agree with me, but I like candidates who are persistent and who um, are bold and they make themselves noticed mm -hmm. uh, both in their resume, in their interview. I I've given interviews before from people who've just followed up and followed up. And building a network is so key to getting recognized and especially at that next level and having people be uh, looking out for you as to, oh, you know, that's a good fit for, for you and, and biding your time until that comes up. I really think uh, communication skills are so essential in our field. We actually, in our interviews for finalists, we do do a writing test, uh, believe it or not, uh, because although these are people with advanced degrees, we trust that they can, they can put sentences together we want to be able to see that they can do that on the spot uh, without too much direction from us. I think highly motivated, uh, you know, volunteering to doing things, to, to taking on new tasks and projects, mm -hmm. uh, highly organized, the ability to take a concept and develop it all the way through. Uh, I, I think that there's a tendency for young people who are graduating from university to have a task, run into a couple hurdles, 
and say, mm, it's not possible. And you can do that in as an undergrad, but in the real world, you've got to find solutions always. It's just having that magic around them that really separates them. And I, and, I, and I see it when I go somewhere and I look for those employees. I look for those people that I say, wow, would I love to hire that woman or that guy because they've just got the magic. And I think it's, uh, it's very hard to, to articulate exactly what that magic is, but you kind of know when you see it. Well, I, I, I think the field needs a lot more discussion of management skills and how to manage people, how to, um, and, and also what other industries do for management. You know, we're so, we spend all our time talking to each other and not enough time learning from other industries. And so I think focusing on this kind of question is brilliant, perfect. Really good timing. It's, it's what we need right now. I think.